Hello and welcome to The Fool and the Philosopher. The Philosopher and the Fool. Alright, so you said you had some stuff you want to say. Yes, so how you fix things is not fixing. You you're, the sort of, you're the sort of person who would go, alright, I, I need to fix something, and I need to fix this microwave. And so you take a hammer and hit the microwave as hard as you can to fix it. That's the sort of person you are. So you're just referring to how I told you just a moment ago that my mouse stopped working after I tried to fix it with a pin and I scratched the sensor. Yes. And how I tried to fix my controller by pouring hydrogen peroxide into it and I rusted the the uh, connections and then I cleaned the connections but in the process snapped off one of the like um, transistors or something. Or the other controller you... No, that's the one you poured alcohol into, wasn't it? Well, and then the other controller... No, I, pulled, I poured hydrogen peroxide into two of them. What? And I snapped the entire joystick controller out of one of them. Oh, yeah, and then you glued a, a it back one. in and fixed it, air quotations. And then a, then my red controller, I just tore this the um, like valve that stops it from breaking out of it to fix it. And that actually kind of worked. And my switch controller, I... Yeah, that you thing's not, never working again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just how, how you fix things is like a mechanics nightmare. <laughs> but I learn... <laughs> But I learn not to do that again and to yeah. buy tougher products. Yeah, I'm like uh, uh, Edison. I know. I now know three ways not to fix a controller. Don't pour chlor- <laughs> Don't pour peroxide into it. Don't let liquid sit in it for a long time. Don't. What the heck was that? Chains. Chains. Yeah. Why do you Anyways, have? Ch- Why do you have chains? They're small ones. Don't worry. What do you have chains for? My wallet. Your wallet has a chain. You're the one to talk about DIY. With You just sent me a photo of your new desk where you've duct taped your mouse and keyboard holders to the desk. <laughs> Those aren't a mouse and keyboard holders. It's a particle board. Yeah, where'd you get that? So I went to Home Hardware yeah. and on my bike, and I bought a piece of particle board. <laughs> And then I realized that it wouldn't fit in my backpack because it's too big. And so I also bought a chisel. And then I broke the particle board into square pieces and stuck it into my backpack and biked home. And then the panels were big enough for me to duct tape them in place. And I also bought a bunch of little pieces of spruce wood so I could build little braces of duct tape and wood. What's that called? Um, Like crazy fixing method? Like ad hoc or i don't know you know where you slap it together like a madman that sounds like what you've done well i feel it feels a little russian (laughs) like that that whole joke of um the japanese buy instructions on how to make a plane off the russians and they build the blueprints and it makes a train (laughs) and they're like what the heck and so they ask the russians that to send them new blueprints the russians okay and they send them new ones and they put it all together, and again, they build a train. And the Japanese are just so confused, so they ask the Russian engineers to come over to build them this plane from these blueprints. And the Russians like, okay, after a while, they send two engineers over. The two engineers build the locomotive, and they say, all right, and then from here, we just work it into a plane. <laughs> you just work it into a plane from there. Yeah, yeah, your desk seems pretty... Cobbled together? Yeah, slapdash. I can't, there's, mm-hmm. there's a word, I, and I can't think of it. Jury rigged. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Yeah, very jury rigged. And I'm considering, I have to be careful because I'm not allowed to permanently modify anything in this room. Yeah. And so I can't, like, use screws, and I can't use even, like, hot glue. So I'm just going to have to, every once in a while, reinforce the duct tape. Yeah, duct tape has a residue, so good luck with that. <laughs> you can uh, wash there, it there's... Yeah, there, there's there's also things to clean the residue of duct tape up. <coughs> Thought I'd just call yeah. in the quiet section there. <laughs> and then um, there is my... I can edit it out. <laughs> yeah. There's my um, computer monitor setup, which um, is on a box. And then on top of that box, there is um, two Kleenex boxes, which are fitted into the slats 
of a wooden board so that I can support my computer monitor so it's at the right height. Yeah, that's definitely... You might want to get something to replace the uh, Kleenex eventually. Yeah, I might want to use them. Yeah, you might. <laughs> that's what they were for. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very much a thing for me, though, of having like good ergonomics. Definitely. I really need it. And this desk just has this massive lip on it. Which makes it so you can't raise your chair too high, so my knees would get stopped by the lip. So I had to bring things down, and then I had to bring the screen up. Yeah, I had that problem with the desk in my room, and that's why I don't use it. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely a nicer sort of desk, but it, yeah, mm -hmm. it's just ergonomics yeah. are king. Yeah, I don't really have that option here. Yeah. I, I wonder... I, if it was like a point, like I start feeling pain, I wonder if it's just I need it more or other people just suffer with that pain constantly. You were telling me just recently that I'm pathetic because I have to have a, a nice setup for whenever I use a computer and my mouse has to be just so and, and now you're <laughs> now you're complaining. So I, I think call you pathetic, did I? Yeah, I think so. You're like, ooh, I need my mouse like this and I need the mouse pad cause, and I can't be on a couch and I can't do this. But now no. you see the importance of ergonomics. Well, I've always seen the importance. I just get set up and used to it. You are you have like a mobile setup, so... Yeah, so it's better. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. Oh, um, um, hello, yes, you are um, listening to um, The Fool and uh, but, uh, The Flosser on Butts. Yeah. So, uh, I'm oh, sorry? No, you continue. Okay, well, that's SOA, actually, is, is part of it. I recently edited our last episode, mm -hmm. as you know, and yeah. I also... Oh, there, I did, it. I did it again. I also have been making response videos to Daniel Green, which you can find over at whatever my YouTube channel is called. I don't know. Lord Cameron? Something I'll like link it. Good luck finding it. But, yeah. Uh, there's another one. Oh, there's another one. I have to edit so much out because I have endless end butts. And, and <laughs> um butts. It's a um but, um but, um but. Uh, mm, uh, mm, uh. You, you see them too now. You hear them. It's driving me insane. The um butts are back. I have trouble speaking now because I'm afraid to, <laughs> to um -butt. say them. <laughs> Do you even like recognize their like waveform once you like edit for a while? You can yes. actually start yes. seeing it's, their waveform. It's like this teardrop shape. Yeah, it's this horrible, disturbing teardrop shape that you're just dread with. And then at the end it. of the teardrop, there's like a, a fuzzy like spike all of a sudden. That's and the, what's the um but? What's the worst is I used to do this where I tried to edit them out. Yeah. But you would go um butt, and I would speak right in the end of the butt. Yeah. And so I couldn't get rid of it because it would cut off my sentence, or I mean, cut it short to begin with. And so sometimes, like they just sort of latch on to other things, and you're like, ah, I can't edit them out. Yeah. Yeah. The two other things that drive me insane. Which might be more of a problem now that we're not beside each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first one, so there's the um buts, yep, and the ands and the ums, all those. The yeah. second one is is your leaning? Uh, no, that that's fine. You lean in and out from the I mic. I actually, I actually zoomed in on myself when I leaned in on the face video I did. Yeah, because I leaned in super hard on one point and the volume doubled. Yeah, well, remember that animation I did of you? Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. I think I was in a rotating chair in that animation, so I was actually turning away from my microphone. Oh. <laughs> I'm so bad about it. You, so, what is it called? You have uh, terrible mic manners. Yeah. So the second thing, I, I'll work on that, but these three things are the first ones, and then I'll work on the leaning. The leaning is yeah. way in the back burner. The second one is... I had I edited it out as many as I could, but it still really annoyed me. Was when one of us is talking and the other person is listening, 
Yeah. We, we, yeah, those. The, yep, 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 yep. Like the occasional yeah where you're actually like into it and stuff is fine. Mm-hmm. But the yeah to just say that you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> they have, yeah. like, I think we just need to shut up and let the other person like ramble because. Yeah. And, and, unless we want to interject because they. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> Off the rails. <laughs> they happen every three seconds or so. And you hear, yep. Yep. Mm. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Radio. <laughs> and it sounds the least interested you can imagine, and it just interrupts the flow of the conversation <laughs> entirely. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we just need to have them. <laughs> the third thing that really annoyed me, and this was especially in the episode I edited, and yes. this isn't as much of a problem, in general, mm-hmm. but it Go was on. a huge problem. Stop it. <laughs> it was a huge problem in the last episode when you could barely talk. Your words were so incomprehensible. I had, <laughs> I had to basically edit you out of the podcast. It's basically just me talking. I don't know if you've listened to it. I have <laughs> listened to it. I listened to the whole thing. But I just tried to get rid of you wherever I could without ruining the flaws. <laughs> out! Out! Out of the video! Your words were just so slurred and poorly pronounced. It was a mess. And I do that I do that too, but it, it was just too much in that one. <laughs> so, uh, I, enunciation, I think? I need to work yes, on enunciation that. is key. Yeah. That's a tricky one, though. It's very me, easy to be lazy with your language. For me, what I've noticed uh, recently is I started getting annoyed with some people because I would say to them, like, there's this thing and there's this thing and this thing and be gone on my conversation. And then, like, they go, oh, that's so cute. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, that's so cute. Like, they just use the same one over and over again. Or someone else would use something out like, oh, cool, man. Oh, cool, man. Like, that that's their default response. Like, one of the guys was, I think he said, oh, that's awesome. And then you giggle a little bit after it. And he'd, like, say exact same way over and over again. And it's really getting to me. And then it feels I, less genuine. Yeah, but then I realized, I do too. I go, interesting. Or, that's really interesting. I told and you, so, you're interesting. You're, you just keep saying interesting. And so, I've been trying <laughs> to use different words. You whip out a thesaurus whenever someone else is talking. <laughs> it drives me nuts. Intriguing. Uh, and yes. Uh, hmm. Scintillating. <laughs> Scintillating, yeah. Or scintillating, yeah. Uh, scintillating. Ponderous. Thought-provoking. Interesting. Dispossessed. Opulent. <laughs> Stirring. Yeah, I, 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 but yes. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> I've noticed those interestings and in myself, and I feel ill now every time I like use one three times in a row. I think to edit your own work is to become self-conscious. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I was thinking, I'd say that I will edit mine, and Cameron will edit his, and then we'll slap them together and see how well that works out. That sounds terrible. Yeah. You are the full part to listening and the philosophy. So I dropped a class. Which one? Cinematography? Yeah. Yeah, I basically looked at, okay, what classes do I need as prerequisites and what sort of just takes and so, that sort of thing? Turns out cinematography is one of those courses you can take at any point. It's not a prereq for anything besides just getting a degree. And so my thoughts were, yeah, I'm going to ask this one. Because it takes up a lot of time in the evening because you have to watch movies and then you have to like write reports on them and you have to write a few essays and so I don't want to write put it off till later? Yeah, basically. Put it off till later. Or find a or wait for an alternate to be being offered. Maybe the plan for new media will change and won't be necessary. What is new media? How old is new? So, new media is not like um, 20th century or, what is it, the new whatever. Uh, new media is 
always the edge of new media technology. So VR and... Yeah, VR um, is it right now, um, the newest version of Adobe is new media, the newest update of whatever, like Facebook is new media. So it's always the edge of media technology. Social media counts too then. Yes. That's a weird one. Mm -hmm. It makes it sound like social media is a form of entertainment. That's a little disturbing. <laughs> I, I wrote something. I haven't been able to work it in forever, but... Well, I haven't been able to work it in yet, but it was... Anything as addictive as social media is necessarily evil. <laughs> so yeah. call, calling it a form of entertainment is a bit worrying. Mm -hmm. Instead of a way... Instead of a, a, a different means of forum. Well, there's a bit of a disturbing line, actually. Like you're saying, anything that's that's addictive is evil. Which, just listening to Jordan Peterson's book recently, I just caught this. Which is um, the whole question of um, why are people addicted to drugs? And Jordan Peterson said, that's the wrong question. The real question is, why isn't everyone doing drugs? Or... Why are people violent? It's like, no, the question is, why are people peaceful? I think with drugs, people have better things to do. Yeah. People that are looking for meaning in their... People that are looking for meaning in their life... Not this again. <laughs> people that are looking for meaning in their life and can't find it turn to drugs or to food or television, social media to try to fill that hole, I think. Yeah. Violence? I think it's not worth it most of the time. You don't gain... We make on-the-fly calculations about everything, and peace tends to be quite a bit more profitable. Well, just looking at those like questions at the different angle is uh, um, interesting. There we go. I can use it there. It's an interesting... Uh, proposition of instead of saying like why isn't everyone peaceful ask instead why isn't everyone violent you yeah it's good to get a complete grasp on an issue look at it from all angles mm -hmm. i wonder like, if oh sorry like when i was um, thinking about my class like why am i here and i was thinking pretty sad about it and i was like okay why are the pauses? But you can't just go, why are the pauses, when you're looking at the pauses from a sad angle. So I had to go from a courageous, happy angle to look at the pauses of it. Why aren't you there? Yeah. But you are. Wait, no. <laughs> why Why aren't you somewhere else? Mm-hmm. What would you do instead? Exactly. You're a loser. You think you have a better place to go? <laughs> no need to be mean. <laughs> What would you rather be doing, huh? Huh? You think you can do better than this? You think you're better than us? Well, we're kicking you out. You don't get to come to our school. Oh, man. It is actually absurd in some ways. I've never encountered a school setting like this. I mean, I haven't been to many, but it's like the attendance policies for my courses are kind of insane. It's like you miss three classes, you automatically fail. Yeah, that is ridiculous. It sounds like they're really not confident in themselves. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, Our stuff is really important. Honest, honest. You'll fail if you miss it. Oh, because you teach so much in a class? No. Well, and then there's this whole thing, which is like... The one class he's meant to be teaching um, Adobe Flash, partly. Not Adobe Flash, um, Photoshop. And he's like, all right, buy this book and um, it has all the Photoshop tutorials so do that and like do one of these every single week and that's like a part of the course and then we'll use these in the class. It's like okay so we're teaching ourselves Adobe and then another person wants us to keep a journal or some sort of portfolio thing and she wants us to like write down all the other learning we do and so we have to seek out for her design class and it's mandatory to have these alternate learning things in there. So it's like mandatory to learn outside of what she teaches. So we have to go and do stuff on our own, but then it's enforced into the course, which feels like they're kind of saying, yeah, we're teaching you, but we really want you to teach yourself mostly and just give us your money. Yeah, it's a bit lazy. It's like those teachers 
in high school that would just read the textbook out loud to you. <laughs> this is the fool and the philosopher. Ugh. Can I get paid now? Um, the one teacher, the guy who's saying, like, do the, the Photoshop book, he is a very good teacher. I think it's more he just doesn't have enough time in his class to teach you the Photoshop. So he does other stuff during the class. Yeah. Like, uh, the huge thing that we did in our very first class is he sort of opened up, like, talking, like, what is new media? And he asked us this question we had to sort of answer and get definitions, so he's, like, trying to get us to do a bunch of critical thinking. And then he started talking about ethics in software design and um, just design in general and engineering and video game making. And so he covered like ethics of being a designer. Yeah, he could talk about the uh, Epic Games Store and how they try to get exclusivity on everything. <laughs> well, the, the huge thing that he's, we started out talking and we uh, watched a movie and we only watched a bit of it because he said he wanted us to watch the rest of it on our own because movies take a lot of time from his class was the light bulb conspiracy and never aired in North America. Have you ever heard of it? No. So light bulbs have in North America, um, were they halogen light bulbs maybe? Yeah, so the ones with the filaments. So when they were originally created by Edison, he um, was like, all right, so I've gotten these light bulbs that last about a thousand hours while they're on, and maybe someday they'll last 2,000 or even more, or 100,000, like, and he kept working to improve them. And light bulbs were constantly like getting improved and worked on until um, a little like after the crash, the what's it, the Great Depression? Yeah. And then uh, all the light bulb companies in the world got together and said, okay, if someone buys a light bulb that lasts 2,000 hours, they're only ever going to need to buy a light bulb like ever. Instead of buying two for a 1,000 hour light bulb, they can just buy one. So it's less profitable for us, basically. Yeah. Because we can't up the price on these 2,000 hour light bulbs. And so over time, like they had the 2,000, I think, 500 hour life bulbs at that time. So over time, they slowly reduced the lifetime of light bulbs and kept trying to make it so they're only 1,000. And then they'd advertise in like big letters slowly over time, like, thousand hour light bulbs good for a thousand hours and it just like sort of continued like that and they kept it at that rate and so it, it was um planned obsolescence huh and so so they the in, incandescent lights can actually go for quite a bit longer yeah well so there's this light bulb in the states which is in a fire house a firefighter house or station and it's been on, like actually on, for over a hundred years. Wow. And some guy who made this insane filament and then died without leaving any blueprints made this light bulbs in this one town and sold several of them. And this is the last one that is around. And it's just always on. And it's like the town's claim to fame as they have this light bulb that's lasted for over a hundred years. Sounds like some crazy light bulb conspiracy theory. Well, the, the movie was called The Light Bulb Conspiracy. And yeah. another problem that occurred was when the Iron Curtain was in place, companies in um, the Germany that was on the Russian side didn't know about this whole light bulb thing. And so anything built by Germans that were on the Russian side lasted forever. Like they had 10,000 hour light bulbs getting made. And like, oh, once we get out of this, like, and sell it to the English market, they're going to love it. And, like, the rest of the world's market, they're all going to love it. It's going to be like, these light bulbs are so good. And then they get there, and they can't give them to any of the big distributors because the um, cartel for light bulbs won't let anything over a thousand hours get sold. The light bulb cartel. <laughs> no, it's actually, there is, like, a cartel. I can't remember its name, but... And that thing's true with a bunch of products. Like, the thing that started out the film it's like you know documentaries they have a personal narrative and then overarching stories that jump about and then one big thing i do now all right this is designed for documentaries anyway so the personal story is about this guy in spain who has a printer which breaks and he goes around from place to place asking hey um 
can you fix my printer? And they're like, oh, you're better off buying a new one. And he's like, oh, it doesn't look too broken. Like, no, just buy a new one. And so he goes looking around trying to figure out, like, what's the problem with this thing? And so the printer, like most printers in the world, have a counter, which is after so many prints and, like, cleans or something, they're built in to break and just stop working. And so this Russian guy develops a software which you can install into your printer and it'll reset the counters to zero and then the printer will start working again. Yeah, printers are nasty. Well, it's like there's just a, and a bunch of products had that. Um, like, you know, the whole debacle with Apple, how they still do the iOS decay. I thought they're not allowed to anymore. They might have had a workaround, but they used to do that. Anyways, another thing they used to do was batteries had um, a built-in depth timing. So they had a limited amount of charges. The old Apple batteries actually weren't trying to get the longest life possible. They built the batteries to break. And so your iPhones and iPods would decharge and die, so you'd need to buy a new one. And then they got sued for that, and that's when they started establishing the iOS kill. And it's this whole, like, this documentary was just insane, the amount of um, companies can do do this and the amount of pollution it produces because it uses up a lot of resources and creates a lot of pollution. It's a bit of a moot point at this point, though, isn't it? Because LEDs last for 30,000 hours. Yeah, well, that's the thing is LEDs are brighter and they last longer. And they use less power. Yeah, and a sort of counter... Like, one of the beliefs is that um, things lasting forever caused was one of the causes for the Great Depression because it was based on the Roaring Twenties was rampant consumerism, right? And then there was nothing left to buy? Yeah, because um, everyone had the best stuff. Like, they had the supercar and you didn't need a better car and they had the clothing that never tore or broke. Like, your clothing would just last forever and your light bulbs would burn forever and everything just worked and so no one wanted to buy anything anymore and so the economy collapsed that was one of the beliefs of the great depression and so someone's solution was he like all right government mandate everyone has to do it that turns out that that was rejected but it turns out that all the companies figured out hey that's not a bad idea and started doing it but now there's in the consumers i feel get really cheesed off by that sort of thing and so instead of having these massive companies everywhere we get like little startups and someone's like all right i'm going to make a watch that works and it's always going to be good and then like he's a small company but people buy his watch once and it's like three guys working so if they sell to everyone in the world they're fine whereas a giant company if they sold to everyone in the world it'd still mess them up because then they couldn't sell any more watches right that's why i bought that razor wolverine controller because they're designed to take a beating whereas yeah. the xbox pro controllers or even their like elites sorry they're called mm-hmm. have a little plastic piece in them it's not designed to break but they could use a metal piece instead and if that snaps the whole controller becomes unusable for someone like me yeah. it causes a lot of drift in the sticks which i find really frustrating it's yeah, like so, not being in control of your own limbs. So people are getting frustrated now just going to individual and smaller companies because they want products that don't fail. And Logitech, their mice kept breaking. Mm-hmm. So I went and bought a much more expensive Logitech mouse to show them who's bought... Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Logitech mouse I've had has lasted me a good while compared to a lot of mice I've used. This lasted me about 10 years. Yeah. And considering the amount of abuse this poor thing's gotten. Um, Mine lasted about a year each. Mm. So yeah. They needed to be replaced. I think it might be, though, that the a baseline good mouse costs more than the average consumer is willing to pay. Mm-hmm. And Logitech, in recognition of that, has made terrible cheap mice for those people that only use their computers you know once or twice every couple days sort of thing yeah or once or twice a day unlike you know 
people like me who I'm playing a clicker game all day that takes 10,000 clicks a day and I'm just rapid. <laughs> uh, that would not be good for me. But I actually, I saw there's a different mouse that I saw us advertising was something like good for 10 billion clicks. Wow. That should be that should keep you going for a couple days. Mm -hmm. I think I would get like a, a rapid fire clicking software if I really wanted. Yeah, well, there's this whole thing um, in Dota, which is like you can hear people click a lot of the times. And so Valve just installed the software into the game where you can set turn on an option, which is if you hold down your mouse, it'll just do auto clicking. Yeah, and I like and I like that. Terraria, on the other hand, has considered doing that. But it'd be OP. People have complained that it wouldn't be balanced to not get Carpal Tunnel from fighting with most weapons. So there's yeah. only one weapon in Terraria I will use, which is the Rainbow Sword or whatever. Which just does the auto swing? Yeah. And there's weapons that are better than it and more interesting, but I can't do it with my hands. It, but yeah, just going back to the ethics. Like you were saying a while ago that you had that one friend who um, like didn't know who Toll Biscuit was, and she went through the same program I'm going through. And yeah. so I believe that she might not have had this guy because he's like a s super advocate of ethics. Yeah. Well, did he tell you about Total Biscuit though? No, he didn't. So she might have had him, just not. Yeah. Although she but... ended up working for EA, so. <laughs> I think, you know, if you work for EA, your ethics class has failed you, I think. <laughs> or they pay you a lot of money. Oh, wait, nope, nope, that's still wrong. Hopefully she doesn't end up putting stuff on the Epic Game Store or something. <laughs> What do you consider ethical? So a can the consumer is only ever hurt by exclusives. Mm -hmm. But is it unethical? Uh, it's unethical if you promised it would be other places beforehand, then you switched it over. I agree with that. Yeah. having some thoughts about Old Testament God versus New Testament God and it's a kind of oh no I think funny thing New Testament uh, would win <laughs> well it's the fun way more power does he yeah he's he's um he's omnipotent whereas the Old Testament guy you know they have to fight like a pharaoh and <laughs> well it's wins, not them but it's it's you know he gets a couple pharaoh gets a couple hits in. It's not so much of like them fighting each other, it's more verses as in... So let's say you have an atheist, right? And an atheist is, I don't believe in God. New Testament God would go, well, if you're a good person, I love you anyways. And if you're a bad person, I love you. Old Testament God, the atheist goes, I don't believe you. He just smites you. Like, I don't care if you don't believe in me, you're dead. Sort of thing, so it doesn't matter. That's because Old Testament God has more competition, so he's less secure. <laughs> he's like your school. He feels insin insecure about the people that come to him, and so he's much more harsh to them. Oh, I was just he doesn't thinking, think they're actually there for him. I was thinking, like, by the beliefs of both of them, atheism is uh, always a bad bet against both of them. Because one of them loves you anyways, and you just have to be a good person, and you'll be fine. And the other one will damn you or smite you i would say that in both cases when you worship god especially the new testament god you are worshiping yourself so atheism or no worship under a certain definition would be not loving yourself and so you do damn yourself because mm -hmm. if you don't love yourself then you send yourself to hell well some people believe like there's no such thing as atheists it's just people who are wrong I think there are atheists, 
but atheists tend to be very depressed or end up killing themselves under that definition. Or atheists they become, are damned. <laughs> or they become postmodernists or communists or fascists. Like they, they, they look for meaning in other places uh, and they don't find it. Or they are de- or they're too afraid to step outside of what they know. Mm. It's a very broad thing, atheistic. Like I'm, was it against religion is basically what that means, or no religion? Atheist means without worship. Yeah. Like, that's kind of insane. To but, be without worship? And to claim that you're atheist. It's not, because the what it means is that you don't worship an imaginary being. And it would be insane to worship an imaginary being. Well, it's, you can worship real things, too. Yes, but atheism grew in response to religion. Mm. Words, just because they're formed from other words to mean something, that doesn't mean that's what they mean. Mm. Like, homosexual doesn't mean one sex. Like, it isn't, you aren't describing a homogenous single-sex race. I guess so. <laughs> For instance. I mean, if everyone was homosexual, though, that would happen. Or a and then there'd be no of, population. <laughs> or a method of homogenous reproduction. Mm-hmm. Whatever that means. Like, maybe you could say... So I had this thought that things reproduce in their own way. And what reproduction means is just the survival of the thing. Mm-hmm. So everything, in a sense, is go- undergoing reproduction. A tree does seeds or it splits or shoots a mountain is just really big and really tough and that's how it stays around yeah the at the start of the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy Mm -hmm. i think it is douglas adams says things that keep happening keep happening yeah which is his definition for everything and i think it's really good one yeah You're listening to The Fool and the Philosopher with Cameron and Connor, and you're also listening to Windswept. So, yeah, that's that done. Hope you enjoy. I just wanted to transfer to the word sin, or the original meaning. I think it's very cool and misinterpreted in some ways, like the, the use of sin now. To get sin wrong is to sin. So yeah, you're missing the point. <laughs> yeah, it's like, sin is bad, but it's not super horrible. Yeah, like there there can be super super bad sins, but not all sins are definitely evil. You're you're just missing the mark. You're missing the point. You've messed up a little. Religion in general, and Catholicism as well, and Christianity are very complicated when it comes to everything, including yeah. sin. Because the religion is hard it's hard to say what it actually is. It's it's not enough to read the Bible. The religion was added to over the years without any like consultation from the Bible, basically. Mm-hmm. The Bible was added to. So something even like the concept of original sin, it it's hard to say if that actually is missing the point at all. You could say that a sin in that sense is just the original tragedy of humanity. It's not actually a sin. It was the right thing to eat the apple. It was the right thing to subject yourself to tragedy because that's the only way that you could live. Yeah, well, you you have to leave even Eden so you can come back into it later and appreciate it. You have to leave Eden to find a better Eden. Yeah. Because well, Eden is a gray disc, whereas if you leave Eden and you see the black and the whites that make up the world, then you get the yin-yang, which is... And you can walk the line of the yin-yang, which yeah. is the, the way, or the Tao, the, the yeah. way of being, which is the infinite staircase that can't... <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, the, but there's this whole thing of... Um, like, when, when we were in Eden, like you say, it's a gray disc. It's more of... I think people were a gray disc. Like, Eden's Eden. There is, um, there's a serpent in Eden. Eden Eden is white, and there's a black dot in it. Yes, so Eden is actually, yeah, there's a serpent in Eden. That's, yeah, that must be something Jordan Peterson said, eh? Oh, yeah, definitely. (laughs) Because 
but that that is i'm not that clever (laughs) (laughs) oh you could have thought of it It, Mm -hmm. so yeah um, so it is a start but we didn't recognize it yeah and so we had we had to eat the fruit and then we had to leave it and now we have to find eden again but the new eden that we find will be the old eden but it'll be way better because we now know that it's good i would also i would argue though I guess the serpent could still be considered chaos and Eden. Or even we have to make a new Eden. I th- yeah, so I think the serpent could is chaos, mm-hmm. obviously, and Eden is order. But Eden is like a fascist dictatorship, and the serpent is like an anarchist. And you need to follow the serpent's advice to break the fascist control in order to forge a society that works that is half chaos and half order but it's not just like you still have to follow the serpent to get out of there and that's bad on every other day you do something mad Mm -hmm. instead they have to be kind of twisted together in a very complicated way it has to be curved like you have to go back and forth along the way like it like the yin yang is an s it's not a yeah it's not a it's not a like a pie cut in half it's two fish swimming around each other and you can't but even that's not enough. You can't just have the division and walk the line. You have to keep changing the chaos and understanding it. And you have to keep breaking what is known and realize that it is not known and that it is restrictive. And that's the dots in the eyes. Yeah. Well, and also, that's partly why Inge is represented as two fish actually circling each other. Because they keep moving into the place that they once occupied, that each other once occupied. So the, they are called Paisleys, apparently. The... Um, Pieces in the yin yang? Yeah. Paisleys. Wait, I always thought that was like a hideous kind of flower. <laughs> I thought it was a color. But it's like a teardrop sort of shape. Hmm. Yeah, whenever I hear like paisley clothing or whatever, that actually means it has a teardrop shape on it. Ah. Turns turns out. <laughs> okay. I'm reading The Witcher right now, speaking of. And it's one of those books where you, I'm very glad I'm reading it on a Kindle because I am learning words. <laughs> Although I'm not remembering them, ah. but um, like he he uses, I think it's in translation, so that yeah. could be part of it. But the the thing around like a underneath a horse's barding around it, you know how yeah. Lego horses have that really colorful like flappy fabric. Yeah, that has a name called like a kushan or kushaver or something, and then another one is the. He uses the 19th century word for sperm whale, which is like a kushat or something. Giant doom monster. Um, uh, cachalot. Cachalot, mm. they were called. Most terrifying thing in the ocean. Yeah. Actually. So it's, an, it's another name for sperm whale is cachalot. Mm. And... Um, Yeah, he, he uses a lot of uh, words I have never seen before in my life. <laughs> and I, I know mean, a lot of words. You do. Your currently is opening his ears to the, the clown and the sophist. It's surprising how little people know sometimes, or I mean, how little people that I don't know's knowledge doesn't overlap with mine. Yeah, when you meet new people, you realize how much of a bubble you live in of knowledge and everything. And yeah. They, kn- they look at you like you're crazy, and you look at them like they're crazy, because you can barely communicate at first. Well, with my roommates, I'm actually, like, it's... I'm really thankful. Like we actually have quite a bit of an interception of that bubble, which is really nice. Don't want to leave. <laughs> but in a different class, we had to be in these groups, and it's called had... my comfort zone because it's comfortable there. <laughs> yes, we had to um, talk to people. Okay, like what media do you like? And so we had like which artists do you like? So we had like film and YouTube makers. We had artists. We had music makers, makers, and video game designers. And so we had to find one in common. 
And so I was like, ask them, all right, so what movies do you like? And they sort of gave them. Pardon? Asking them. Yeah. Okay. And they sort of gave me. Said like, asking, them. <laughs> asking them. They sort of gave me non committal answers. And I was like, all right, what about like, which artists or designers do you like? And they sort of gave me some things like, all right, any influencers, YouTubers? And I just kept trying to find things. Eventually, we came up with one commonality, which was um, Studio Ghibli. And it took me forever to get there. Was this for your group or the entire class? For my group. There's only two other people, but it still took me forever to get there. Start with the most popular things and work your way down. I was. Do you like PewDiePie? Do you like Harry Potter? Do you like the most popular video game? Uh, I don't know. But something else came out of that when we were um, connecting each other on Facebook because we have to do a group Tetris. project. Which is, we found out that we had... Me and one of the other people found out we had mutual friends. Wow. And i um, probably going to cut this bit, but it was um, Ashley and Christine are this person's mutual friends, and they've been, like, best friends in, like, childhood or something. Like, they always hang out together. Ashley, like, the, the Texas Ashley? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Ashley and Christine? Yeah. Yeah, so it turns out, like, they were, she's really good friends with those two. That's cool. And so she's in one of my classes. And it's like, whoa, that's the, what, six degrees of separation or five? Yeah, it's, it's called six degrees of separation. Yeah, it was kind of like, whoa, that came out of nowhere because I'm friends with them because of you. And then, but I'm still friends with them. And then it's like, hey, this is someone else who knows them. And so we actually have mutual friends somewhere else in the world. That, that's and we, cool. Yeah. So How did you find out that you knew them? Uh, when I... We had to form a Facebook group. And so he's like, hey, you have mutual friends of these two people. This is how I know them. How do you know them? And so I told her. Yeah, it's crazy how everyone's like one step away. Mm hmm. Or oh, one or two, sometimes three, but still. And then once you meet up that person, he's no longer even one step away. It's just, boom, you're connected with them. And they have a bunch more connections. Yeah. Also, password. oh, sorry. No, continue. I just want to talk about passwords. It's very unrelated. Okay, go ahead. I'm I'm done. I was going to make a statement, then I decided against it. Okay. So passwords, right? Yes. The man who gave it all the advice that's used on passwords back in two thousand and something, early two thousands, said yeah. you want to have a different password for everything, and you want it to be complicated you want letters and capitals and numbers and symbols and no relation this, to real words yeah and all this complicated stuff mm -hmm. passwords are basically impossible to remember so i just want to do a little mind exercise okay okay so imagine your password is one letter long okay. yeah and it is a actual letter of the alphabet it's lowercase only yeah so it's like the letter b if I sent something to crack your password, it would take at most 26 guesses to guess your password. Yeah. So we'll call that a strength 26 password. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's, now let's take this guy's advice. Let's add capital letters. That doubles it. That's 52 different passwords now. Mm -hmm. And then let's add symbols from the top. Let's add numbers. So that's 62 now. Yeah. There's like 10 numbers. Yeah. And then let's add the symbols above the numbers. Now we have 72 that's a strength 72 password. So it is like three times as strong by mm -hmm. adding all those symbols in. So, so far, so good on his advice. Yeah. Okay. Instead of doing that, let's instead make your password two lowercase letters long. So now that's tw one in 26 and one in 26. Your password would now take four over 400 tries to guess. Yeah. Your password got 26 times stronger by adding a second letter. So really, passwords should all be lowercase words that are mm -hmm. easy to remember in sequence. I think a much stronger password than some complicated, like, you know, exclamation marks, letter three and some weird word. Yeah. Would be like the word, a much stronger password would be password, 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 password five times. Yeah. And like, if you just wrote password five times... Well, Nothing's going to break that. <laughs> one piece of advice someone in one of my classes said about passwords is just have your password be a statement that you can remember, which is kind of meaningless to you, but it's like, 
the roses are red. Like, that could be a very strong password. Or correct horse battery staple. Yeah. That's one I've used before. Or um, I like the color not anymore. blue. So I'm not... Yeah, or you could even... If you want to get really complicated, you could take like a word like dead, and then you could say, dogs eat always soon. And, and then you're like, what's your password? Dead. Dogs eat always soon. Bam. Yeah. Yeah. And the problem is websites don't always accept that. Mm-hmm. I have seen some that do a thing I like where it's like, your password has to be at least seven letters long and contain all these symbols and passwords and all that. Yeah. Or it has to be 16 characters long. Or well, longer. I, I hate the must have uppercase, lowercase letter and symbol. Yeah, that's really annoying. And, it, and it's less secure. Just I, I just proved it right there. So mm-hmm. Well yeah. one, I, I don't know why it was on my mind, but it, it was bothering me. So one of the so, things for me is I generally use about the same thing yeah. for every password. Generally. Which isn't good. No, it's not. I switch up sometimes, but I, why I use the same thing is because it has all these requirements. And so what I do is I just add the variations in. I just hit the shift key, basically. And I think most people do that. Yeah. because and so once you get someone's password, you just add a couple of variations and shuffle it through. And then you've reduced mm-hmm. it to like 100 possible combinations. Yeah. But people do that. Why people do the one word is because it's... It's so complicated to remember. Yeah. But what you do is your Facebook password... Is friends always cure eczema, but only on koalas, and that's your Facebook password. And then your Reddit password is ride entire dog, read entire dog dictums, invent truth. And like you, and then it's easy to remember all of them. You're just like, oh yeah, that's what I would have thought of. Well, well, my favorite one is... And you now that, that method is like suddenly going to get a lot of people. <laughs> One of my favorite ones is you um, come to a website and you're like, oh, this looks interesting. You log, you try to log on to it. And it's like, this email already exists. And you're like, what? And then you try typing all your passwords and it doesn't work. And they're like, what was my password back then? <laughs> and the correct horse battery staple thing is actually from an XKCD comic, which talks about this as well. Mm-hmm. But it talks about it a little bit more technically than just my off the top of the head math. And probably he knows more. He knows more about. Well, he definitely knows more about this. Yeah. But just off the top of my head, math, it's pretty obvious that add a second letter and you get twenty six times more security. Whereas you only get three times more security if you add all this craziness. Yeah. Was the um. Oh well, it's left me. Shall I rant to fill time? No, I won't remember. It won't. So what if back. all of life is one time ty- like massive? Four-dimensional organism, right? No, 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 no. Um, no, no this is, this is interesting. I think this is really cool because you could see it as like the head is like the first bacteria cell and then you go down or that's like the zygote is the you first bacteria cell. You've talked about this before. Then, but it's such a crazy idea. Okay. Speaking of dimensions and um, back to some people's words mean different things than our words. I actually got very frustrated in one of my classes, and I know this is one of my, I don't know, you could probably call it my petty frustrations, or like me hating people calling dogs their children, stuff like that. Uh, but a teacher was talking about dimensions, and he's saying, like, what's two dimensions? And he, like, went through, and then it's like, what's three dimensions? Okay, like, you add the space, and then four dimensions, you add sound, and then five dimensions, you add the sense of smell, and... He was basically talking about like media forms and people like, oh, you're a 3D artist, so fancy. It's like 2D artists do a lot more in some cases and a lot less. And then there were like tons of mediums to think. And I was thinking whenever he said 4D, it's like, all right, yep, time's involved. And then you go to 5D and it's like, I have no idea what's five dimensional anymore. But just my perspective of what dimensions mean was so different than his and it's starting to frustrate me. But a dimension is just a... a, a... A, a measurement like a, yeah. a scale right so you could have how loud something is mm-hmm. is a dimension uh, along its but just um, my understanding how i view dimensions was very different because you could say position is only one dimension and then sounds like, like volume is another and luminosity is another and albedo is another and well, well i have a counter to that which is that's all just the fourth dimension because so three dimensions is objects 
and so space is three dimensional. And then you add time, and objects interacting through time creates everything else. That's a very limited scope. It would be like saying you would you would define pot as only the kind you smoke. <laughs> No, it's what I sit on when I have to use the washroom. Remember to set your password to the fool and the philosopher, and it will never get hacked. Another statement he used is that um, reality has infinite definition. He might not be wrong. He might not be, but... I thought it was a little too broad a statement. There is a point where... Things can no longer be measured. Yeah, because light is... But is there actually? Is is there a smallest... Plot that sounds length. like a Vsauce video. Is, hello, is there, Vsauce here. Is, is there a small length? Is there... Like, there's the pl plonk length, or plank length, whatever it's yeah. called. Which is the shortest... No, you're, you're distance, doing it wrong. It'd be the the plonk length it. defined as this, blah, 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 blah. All but right. The plonk is length is defined as the time it takes light to go over the shortest... No, wait. Hmm. It's... it's The time... Yes. Uh, the plonk... Wait. Where did... Hmm. I, I, I'm confusing myself now. Um, uh, okay. Looking it up. Same. Okay. Physics stops working at 10 to the negative 35 meters, apparently. So that's so, what we call the Planck length. So in, the no, here, here, let me do it. Sorry, that's, that, that's the Planck length. So the Planck length is the amount of time it takes light to go over the smallest usable scale. Okay. In physics, the Planck length is a unit of length that is the distant light travels in one unit of Planck time. The smallest measure amount of time. <laughs> really? Yes. So it's the, so it's very different from what I just said. Yeah. Okay. Why is it the smallest amount of time? Um. Because it's the amount of time that goes by when light travels one plonk length. Is it? No. <laughs> okay. I hope not. I'll have to look up um, what plonk time uh, one unit of plonk time is now. It's ten to the negative forty three seconds. Whatever that means. Yeah, the one... Planck math mass is twenty-two micrograms. Ah, in quantum it... mechanics, Planck time is the unit of time in a system of natural units known as Planck units. A Planck time unit is the time required for light to travel the distance of one Planck length in a vacuum. So I was right. They can't be defined off of each other. I was right the first time. <laughs> this is the initial definitions. It might be something else. If you put a particle in a box that is the Planck length or smaller, the uncertainty in its position is greater than the size of its box. That's the Planck length. Yeah, so the Vsauce would, video would go that... Um, or hello, the Planck, uh, whatever it is. Yeah. Hello, v is Planck. Okay. Vsauce here. In physics, the Planck length is the unit of length that the distance of time in one Planck time, or whatever it takes, travel. <laughs> then what is Planck time? So eloquent. I don't... I, I don't have a script for now here. Well, it's Planck time, and then he'd go through Planck Just time, and then Wikipedia. he would go, oh, that's confusing. <laughs> I'm explaining. I'm not even trying to do it anymore. I'm going to have to make this video now. I don't want so to do basically, that basically, you can't say that the particle is occupying the box with confidence mm -hmm. after it's a Planck length smaller, or yeah. smaller, which means that you can't say anything is there because you don't actually know where anything is. Does it, do you think physicists at any point looked at what they were writing about the universe and didn't just stop and say, wait a minute, we messed up somewhere. This doesn't right. make any sense. So let's, let's start again. We messed up. Here, this is nonsense. Here's we what's can't, happened, Cameron. So physicists went until it broke, and then some of them went, we'll ignore that. And the other ones went, we'll ignore the rest of physics and only work on this. And that's how quantum physicists turned up. Yeah, but then everyone is saying that there's a distance that is too small to know where something is or not, which means you can't say where anything is. It's just 
they move over such a small distance, you can sort of roughly say, well, they're within one Planck length of this point, so therefore we can define their existence. Do they not realize how nonsensical that sounds? That's... We should just give up on physics and start it like, there should be exact measurements on everything. Well, as I said, the, the physicists gave up on the halves they didn't like. Or, alternatively, humans take massive shortcuts when determining things, and our common sense does not align with the universe. Which, I think, in that case, we should create a machine that rewrites the rules of the universe to make common sense. Because... <laughs> Cameron? Like bloody stupid Johnson, we should round pi to be three. Cameron? <laughs> yeah. Just the physicist put that in, input that into the machine, and it's just worry, and then a little equal sign turns up, and then it just generates a picture of a duck. <laughs> That's actually like the plot of the uh, the Broken Empire trilogy, or the Prince of Thorns books, roughly. Really? Is, yeah, uh, humanity create turned the wheel of Oshime, which is basically a massive particle reactor, mm -hmm. to change, rewrite the rules of reality slightly so that willpower affects the universe. <laughs> and so things that should be are, basically. So I basically added um, narrativium to the universe. Yeah, so the whole plot of the series, massive spoilers for the next, like, 30 seconds. You, I will give you three seconds to leave. One two three okay so the whole plot of the series is that the main character wants to become the emperor so that everyone thinks he's the emperor he can do anything and then he can use that power to base to like be god i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say but do what he wants with it mm -hmm. yeah so it's not a big spoiler but it is a massive okay we're done the spoilers you can come back now if that doesn't make sense but yeah we're good no spoilers mm -hmm. no spoilers but we should really put, like, a time thing in here. I don't know. Oh, well. I think people that listen to this have given up on ever not having spoiled media at this point. Just just imagine, like, this, the if that machine happened, that was equals a duck. Like, what would that mean? Well, it'd mean you messed up because you, you were supposed to make the machine make common sense. And so you the machine didn't work. But what if it did, does make sense? It doesn't. How can the smallest possible point be a duck? Not the smallest possible point. The universe. The universe can't be... Well, the universe can be a duck. Sure, that, that makes like sense. Like, all the laws, everything, the answer is a duck. It's, no, that doesn't make common sense, Connor. Cameron, it's a four-dimensional duck that's intersecting with another four-dimensional duck. Make it a five-dimensional duck intersecting okay. with another sure, five dimensional sure. duck. Sure, it's a five-dimensional duck and where it's beak. No, we're the intersection between it and another duck. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, I see you. I see you. All right. We're like a cross-section of two ducks. Yeah. With a cross-section, one duck creates on another duck in five dimensions. Wouldn't it be... That, that, that works for me. Can we rework math, even not even having pi equal three, but just have pi equal one? Because, like, circles are pretty important, so just having it equal one, like, and all no, other math... No, no, you do not want... No, ones are really bad. Are they? Yeah, because oh, you yeah, can't square them. Okay, right. <laughs> it would cause all sorts of horrible issues. Everything would be like the same size. All right, fine. Yeah. Pi can equal three then. Okay. Or how about how about like a two? That's an easy number to work with. Yeah, all other math has to just be readjusted so pi can equal two. Yeah, we could actually do that. Like you would just have. Well, we can't because it's irrational. Every other number would basically have to become irrational. <laughs> exactly. It would not solve any problems. It's like. Pi is now a, a proper number, but everything else is irrational. <laughs> well, it's, it's trying to... Every number would have to be represented as divided by pi. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's trying to fix a cracked window with a hammer. You can get rid of the crack with the hammer. But then you just create more cracks. Yes. You, no, you make a hole in the window. Yeah. It's... But you would actually end up dividing everything by pi, and then pi would just become a, like this weird formality, and then you could just get rid of it, and then we'd be back where we started. Yeah. You are listening to The Fool and the Philosopher with Cam and Con. Just been playing the old Age of Wonders. <laughs> but even then, I don't have time to myself anymore, so I'm probably going to slow down. Why don't you have time to yourself? 
I always have to like do phone calls and like do podcasts, and I'm just busy all the time. <laughs> so there's I don't like, like playing games when there's other people in the house, and mm. this is the only time where it's free to myself. And you're talking to me. <laughs> there's this experiment you can do, which is you can go. Oh, I never have any time. Actually, think about what you spend your time on. And then think which things are necessary or which things could I get rid of so I get more time for what I want to do. No, it's not that I don't have time. I have time. I just mm-hmm. don't have to- the kind of time I want. Like, it's like. There's different really kinds like, of time. It's like, I really like swimming, but I don't have time to swim. You're like, you have tons of time. You're wasting away all this time. Yeah, but the pool's frozen for most of the year. Like, that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's not the right kind of time. So there's different kinds of time. There's like green time blue time sort of pinkish if i time. want to p- really get involved in a game i need like a good chunk of the day set aside to myself where i can just play the game with no interruptions from like dawn till you know, dusk y- <laughs> sitting in my underpants even, i don't even want to play the game that long i just want to have the the time to myself i get that i just I, like yeah and, and there's different kind like yeah I, I just need to get out of here. No, there is different kinds of times. I've found that with college. It's part of the reason why I uh, dropped the sim class, which time it was located in. Because I've set my classes, basically. So I wake up at 6, and my classes start at 9. So that's about 3 hours. And I started waking up later and later because I realized I can't do any, really do anything in those 3 hours. Like, 3 hours, that's a lot of time. But then I have to, like... Like, eat food and, like, get dressed, all that stuff, and get to class. And that takes him out of time. Then there's, like, breakfast. Pardon? <laughs> Just a pet peeve of mine. The word food. Okay. Eat breakfast. <laughs> don't, don't indulge me i'm just insane and then i have to get to class. And so those three hours really aren't time that could be used. And then there's, like, six hours... Or so in between my one classes and my cinematography. And then even after that, there's like two more hours. So that's like eight hours altogether. However, I felt like I could only use four hours of that in-between time. And then those two hours after cinematography weren't usable at all. Exactly. And that's how I feel about However, getting rid of the cinematography gives me ten hours I can use. Regimen I'm on. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, so I need to I need to I need to change things up, but to do that I need a lot of money. I need to, to do, do that. Job. I need to rob a bank, <laughs> or or other things. You know, there's other options. No, I I just I'm, I'm fine. I, I got I got plans. Soon, soon, yes, soon. You just say that and rub your hands together. Yes. Sit in a corner, yeah, just... watch people. Hopefully within the next two months, I'll be in a situation where I can just play 500 hours of Factorio in a day. <laughs> if you can do that, can I have your time tour once you're done with it? Why don't I just go back in time and steal it for myself and give you that one? Sure. Yeah. Once you have one time turner, can you even fin it? No, that'd be a paradox. What? You're not allowed to create paradoxes with time turners. Why not? It's against the rules. But what if you just gave them back afterwards so no one noticed? Well, then it'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah, so you can have infinite time turners. But you have to give them back. Yeah. And infinite would be very hard to keep track of. But you can give them back. You have, like, all the time in the world with the time turner, so you can give them back. Except they get smashed, and then you couldn't give them back. So you have to give them back before they're smashed. Well, you will give them back before they're smashed. Otherwise, they won't work. Yeah. You've already given them back, so you're fine. So you never have to give them back. Yeah. Because someone will do it. Yeah. I don't know about that. I think someone has to. Yeah, and they will. It's just you don't have to because it's already been done. No, but you have to do it still. Yeah, but you can do it later because you've got a time turner. No, but it's not like the time travel in Pathfinder because they actually had to rescue Sirius. They didn't just say, yeah, we would have saved him, so we don't have to. They actually had to go back in time and save him. Yeah, I think Rodell is just being unimaginative. Rodal didn't write Dresden Files. <laughs> or Harry Potter, for that matter. <laughs> J.K. Rowling. They both have Roll in their name. 
It's excusable. Greg Dahl didn't write the Dresden Files. <laughs> it's excusable. <laughs> they both have Earl in their name. Yeah, and both those books are about Harry, so... Yeah, Harry Wizards. Okay. Enough of this drivel. All right. Well, uh... Okay, anyways, that's that. Bye. Bye.